Hey, what's up with you guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, this is going to be a basic kind of beginner's guide to Arena for Demonology. Um, I'm going to have some clips of some games here at the end. This is the first week that Arena has come out, so um, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the rating and all that kind of stuff because it's a little bit crazy for the first couple weeks until everything kind of settles. Um, but, you know, these, some of these were some good games, and it gives you a good idea of at least the play style. I don't know how strong Demo is going to be at a very competitive level once you start getting into, you know, 25, 2600 ratings, stuff like that. Um, but it is pretty decent and it's a lot of fun. I've been playing with, I think, Arresto Shaman's a really good uh, twos partner and there's a lot of good threes comps that we can run. And I'm going to show you guys kind of some of the strengths of what Demonology is and kind of the general play style and setup of what I'm trying to do. Now, let me go over the talents first. And this is the build that, um, that I'm currently have been using. Uh, demonic strength pretty much a go-to here kind of makes sense i don't know how you would justify either of these other ones power siphon potentially could see running doom here but i don't like demonic calling since we are running master summoner that's pretty normal and straightforward when it comes to demo pvp so i think it's really between one of these two and i just like power siphon because being able to kind of hold this as an additional burst if i need to um, I have that. Doom's also very fine if you like running Doom uh, and you're not worried about it getting uh, cleansed off depending on what comp you're playing against. Demon Skin, I think, is the default here for PvP. 35 row, I've been running Soul Strike. Now, Vile Fiend is great. However, 1.7 cast time um, is kind of long to add that into your kit of already having a handful of casts that you need to get off. So I prefer running Soul Strike. This, the other thing that's interesting about this is this does not get locked out. Um, when you get kicked uh, on like shadow and stuff like that. So you can still do this uh, while you're, you know, basically not able to cast other things. So even though you might not be prioritizing this, I like having this as an option in PvP. Uh, and from the shadows, it's just this is not a long enough debuff time to be able to reliably be able to, you know, utilize this debuff um, in PvP. If you get CC'd or your target runs around a corner or something, it just, it's not reliable. So I prefer Soul Strike in this row um, has been a, a good choice and I really have enjoyed running this. Uh, Mortal Coil for me is the go-to here. Um, I don't think there's really a good justification for the other ones, but maybe if you want to run something else, you definitely can. I think Mortal Coil is just superior to these other two in pvp in the 45 row i'm always running grimoire of felgard just because it's very very good as a two minute cooldown an additional stun gives you just a lot of control a lot of burst uh, and it's much more impactful than these other two talents in my opinion and then we go down here to demonic consumption nether portal is too long of a cast and not reliable to be able to use this effectively and sacrifice souls requires us to have a lot of demons up constantly um, and there are play styles you can kind of try and do this but this is hard in arena to really manage effectively demonic consumption is just very very good all around one thing worth mentioning though is that if your tyrant does get cc'd or you know people run away from your tyrant or whatever this is basically going to be negated so if you're having a real hard time with having any actual output from your tyrant it might be better to go like sacrifice souls because you might actually be able to get some value from this so i think that is going to be a potential issue as we start getting into higher rating and people get more familiar with Demo, um, being able to play around, you know, avoiding our tyrant is going to make talents like Demonic Consumption potentially not very good if it's not actually able to sit out there and, and cast its spells. Now, the PvP talents, like I mentioned already, Master Summoner is pretty straightforward. And now I think Essence Drain, I think this is actually going to be kind of like sleeper strong when we start getting into having some more legendaries and conduits and things like that. Um, because this is, Life Drain's already pretty strong in general. And the thing that's great about Life Drain is it's on the Shadow Spell School. So if you cast Life Drain and you get kicked, you can still cast things like Hand of Gul'dan and your Demon Bolt. So I kind of have been using Life Drain a good amount in situations if I'm kind of getting focused to basically bait out kicks. And if they do kick it, I can then just start spamming like Hand of Gul'dan's and things like that. Um, so I I've been actually really enjoying this. The other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I don't have it yet because we need the first week of the Great Vault to come out, but this legendary uh, Claw of Endereth, I think that's how you say that, your drain life now channels 100% faster and restores health 100% faster. This is the legendary effect that you can get from the Great Vault. And then you pair this with things like, I know this is slightly cut off for you guys, so I apologize for that, but um, you pair that with things like Accrued Vitality, 
which your drain life heals you for 52% of the amount drained over 8.3 seconds. So you can see we have a few things that we can start doing to kind of cater to our drain life. Um, and the legendaries, I would say all of our legendaries are kind of lackluster when it comes to PvP. So I actually do think this is going to be the legendary that I am going to be running once it's available for PvP specifically. I think it's going to be our strongest legendary for PvP. You pair all this life drain stuff with our soul link and just you know the demon arm and all the all that kind of stuff and we just are really really tanky as a caster not to mention us playing necrolord we have things like fleshcraft and you have kind of these other things at your disposal um it's pretty pretty insane so that's um that's the the two that let me move this over the two uh pvp talents i run all the time are these gateway mastery i really like a lot um, but you definitely could run any of these other ones. If you really like nether ward or you want to use this kind of as a flex talent between, you know, nether ward against casters and call fell lord against melee, you have all kinds of options you could do. Um, with this build essence drain is not necessary, but once we get that legendary and if you have the conduit and you're able to kind of pair those things together, I think it's going to make our drain life very, very powerful and a very useful spell for us to have at our disposal. Um, so I think these two are going to be kind of stuck where you're not going to want to um, to get rid of these. Not to mention, I didn't even talk about this, but the damage mitigation you get from the Essence Drain debuff that you apply to the target is really massive as well. So th this just makes us really tanky. And if we pair that with you know, like the legendaries and stuff I already said, um, I think this is going to be a go-to. So again, gateway mastery, not necessary at all. I just have grown to really like this talent. And um, But if you like any of these other ones, you could totally sub this out. This is not instrumental to this play style at all. Um, and then now conduits real quick now the thing that i found to be the best for this build and i'm still kind of messing with these but i think fell commando is the go-to here um reason being is in our burst setup the vast majority of our damage is coming from our fell storm and our actual pet itself um and people tend to focus your pet sometimes in pvp so i think this is going to be our go-to uh conduit here for this build specifically the other thing, like I'd mentioned, is this Drain Life um, uh, Endurance Conduit is also very good. If you're playing Necrolord, I think um, running this Maraleth tree, there's so many weird names and all this stuff, but this first, you know, uh, Soulbind Path that you get, this is very strong. This procs pretty reliably and it's percentage health based, so it's going to be good for the entirety of Shadowlands. And um, I, I like these this setup right here with these two initially, and then we'll have some options as we get down here later. And I think Ultimate Form is going to be very, very strong um, once we get into, you know, the later parts of the expansion, we actually unlock this. So while this, if you're watching this at a later date, um, I still think this is always going to be a very, very strong, defensive, well-rounded uh, soulbind tree for us here. Uh, the other conduits that are pretty decent if you don't have Fell Commander or you don't like it, Born of Blood is decent if you're able to actually get some Hand of Gul'dan casts off. This can be good. I found that it's hard to really utilize the Demonic Core procs and not overcap on shards effectively in pvp just in general because there's a lot of parameters that you're dealing with and sometimes you can't hard cast hand of gold in to dump your shards so um, i found that the demonic core proc type conduits usually are hard to really utilize well and you don't really get a, a lot of consistent value from them because of just pvp stuff tyrant soul is a similar situation this can also be good but if people you know run away from you during this whole time of your tyrant and after your tyrant it's hard to utilize this well um carnivorous stalkers could be a good option here but you get a lot more damage from your uh fell guard so i think fell commando is just superior if you're comparing these two like pet damage options i mean i think that's pretty much it we don't get a lot of damage from our uh, decimating bolt with this build so um, i wouldn't say fa fatal decimation is very good for this setup either now you'll see in these clips here um there's a lot of macros and different things that i've used for pet control and all that kind of stuff and i'm going to make a separate video for that because it'll make this video very very long but there's a couple really significant macros for PvP specifically when we're talking about demonology. Now, one of them, as you see right there, is I have a slash cast fell domination, slash cast fell guard macro. So it's just one button to basically resummon my minion. That's very important. If you guys don't have that, I suggest doing that because there's not scenarios where you're wanting to just immediately summon a different minion. You're always really wanting to summon your Felguard, at least with this build. I forgot to transmog our stupid cloak here. Now, 
the other thing is, I don't know if this will let me actually set a focus. Oh, it will. Nice. So one thing that's important here are focus macros. And there's only really two of these that I use regularly and are a very integral part of this play style. And that's a focus fear macro as well as a focus axe toss macro. Now, you could do this if you were running with a succubus, for example, or a fell hunter. You could still use the same macro. I think it's like a slash focus macro at uh, our pet command macro at focus if that makes sense, so that this these will change. You'll see if I switch pets, these change to, you know, seduce for succubus and the kick for fell hunter. So this is relevant, is a relevant macro all the time in PvP for basically every spec, but really more so for demo. It's very important because you have your pet stun that's ranged, that's huge, and it doesn't DR with your fear. So our general gameplay here is that we are setting a focus target. So say this is the healer and this is the DPS that I'm on here. Now my focus macro is going to make my pet axe toss this target, right? And then I'm going to stay here and I would be fearing this target right after that axe toss, right? This entire time I can be focusing DPS on the kill target, but this allows me to not have to switch targets, maintain uptime on my target, you know, for the vast majority of the game and be able to easily CC the other target. Now you can also have a separate key bind for axe tossing your target that you are focusing right now, like you yourself are actually targeting in the same thing with fear. That's up to you, but, um, there's variations of all these kinds of macros. I'll post what I'm using down below in the description. If you guys want to just copy paste that, um, but that's the general gameplay. Every 30 seconds, you have a stun into a fear combo, assuming that you can get that cast off and it provides a lot of pressure the whole time. You can see even me not attacking or touching anything your pet is still going to be doing all the damage on the kill target, putting up the Legion Strike debuff, which is, you know, like the mini Mortal Strike. It's just a lot of pressure. Very, very good. Very, very strong. Now, where this build really shines is the amount of cleave that you have. There's a lot of melee comps currently, and this build shreds melee really, really hard. If they try and focus you, they get punished for it between our normal fell storm and our demonic strength, pairing that with things like Grimoire Felguard, buffing our tyrant, popping our trinkets, and popping all of that cleave does a ton of damage. And you'll see in these clips, there are plenty of these games that I'm topping the damage in the game and just wrecking because it's just so much AOE damage that they're taking. A lot of these games, if you do end them early, the vast majority of your damage is coming from Fellstorm, so it's important to understand that and be prioritizing the way you're playing to maximize that damage because it is so strong. But the general setup of what we're trying to do since we are running, um, shoot, I can't think of it, Demonic Consumption, you want to basically get your Dreadstalkers up, you want a Grimoire Felguard, and then you want a Tyrant. Those are the only three things you really need to get going to be able to do a ton of damage here. Now, Dreadstalkers is instant cast, that's easy. Grimoire Felguard, instant cast, that's easy. The hard part here is getting your Tyrant off. Now, there's a few ways that you can do this Tyrant setup. It's important to understand the DR mechanics with your pet stun because Grimoire Felguard is also going to pet stun. Let me see if I can get this stupid guy to go away. These guys are so annoying that they, the little minion guys. But you, you basically, you want to be focused pet stunning, not the target that you're killing. You want to Grimoire Felguard the target that you're killing. And then that's what you want to do. So you basically are doing two simultaneous axe toss pet stuns on two different targets. Generally, this is going to get trinkets from both of them, and if it, they don't, it's a pretty significant stun for them to have to sit through. Almost always, I would say 99% of the time, people are trinketing one of these because I do this in the opener. If they do that, you can use Coil as a secondary way of basically ceasing a target. He's not going to have trinket, right, to get out of it, to then be, be able to hard cast your tyrant. You also potentially have unending resolve at your disposal, depending on what kind of pressure people are putting on you in the opener. Um, but that's another option as well. So you want to basically be using the double stun to get your tyrant off. So you want to dread stalkers into Grimoire Felguard. The. Um, I'm trying to get this guy to go away there nice please go home 
Um, you want to Grimoire Felguard the kill target, and you can pet stun. Since this is a, an ability off of your pet, it does not share your global cooldown, so you can do them both at the exact same time. And then you want to basically use that to hard cast your tyrant. If you feel confident that you're going to get focus right after, you can preemptively cast Unending Resolve. Um, you can also kind of wait to do this setup until they get like their initial opener on you if you're worried about getting stunned through this. But it's important you want to be trying to get your tyrant up with both your Dreadstalkers and your Grimoire Felguard up. That's the goal. If you can't do it, it's not completely devastating. You still can do a lot of damage without it, but that's really kind of the big, the big chunk, the big meat of this, this burst is being able to pull that off. So again, we'll do the same thing here and I'll kind of show you that we'll have this guy focused as if this is like a secondary target, this is the healer or something. Then once we get the tyrant up in that opener, you're going to want to pop your trinkets and you're going to want to pop demonic strength. One other macro I have here, I've talked about this before. I have a, a pop like blood fury and on use trinkets with a hand of gold to dump shards right after demonic tyrant. In this build, in this setup in PvP, I have these uh, the Blood Fury and the on use trinkets paired to cast before I cast my Demonic Strength. Since Demonic Strength is an instant cast, it won't have a weird batching issue, which you can get sometimes with Hand of Gul'dan. I don't know if you guys have experienced that, but if you chain the cast together and there's no gap in between your Tyrant cast and your Hand of Gul'dan, it will actually pretend like you didn't want to use your trinkets. So that's kind of annoying. You avoid that problem when you pair on use effects with an instant cast because you can kind of just spam the instant cast and you have that whole global to basically spam it. So TLDR, I'm pairing my big burst in front of my demonic strength. So we're getting our tyrant up to buff our pets damage. We're going to be at five shards. We're going to pop all of our on use stuff. And we're going to demonic strength and that whirlwind is going to just do a ton of damage, a ton of cleave, and it's going to hit really, really hard. Then off of that, we have Hand of Gul'dan. You have all different kinds of things you can be throwing out. Soul Strike is this is going to scale with like the Tyrant bonus damage and all your on use stuff. And you're going to kind of end up overcapping on shards unless you can free cast Hand of Gul'dan. It just depends on the situation. And you'll see in this video, there's a bunch of different ways to kind of go around that. But TLDR, we're going to send our pet in here. I'm going to Dread Stalkers. Whoops. Oh, we don't have the PvP down up. And we'll do that. So you see we have the double stun right here. And then we pop all of our on use and you see our pets just cleaving. Each hit of my whirlwind thing is hitting for like 15, 1600. So if those are critting, that's 3000, 3000, 3000 and it's cleave. So you can see here, we only had one fell storm, right? I didn't, I didn't cast an additional fell storm. That fell storm did 10,000 damage to each of the targets. So it's doing a ton of damage with this setup, not to mention your Tyrant's doing a lot of damage, your Dread Stalkers are doing a lot of damage and your Fell Guard's doing a lot of damage. All of this is out and just dishing damage to whatever the target is while simultaneously you have casted two stuns on two different targets and the only cast that you have is a 1.7 second cast on your actual tyrant. Everything else is instant cast in PvP. Ignore the Dreadstalkers cast in this example because we don't have war mode on but you get the idea. Instant cast, instant cast, 1.7 cast, instant cast, and you're dishing out all that damage. You can see that pets obviously attacked for a little bit longer there, but 87,000 damage just in that combo. That's going to be your bread and butter, butter with this build. That's going to be what you're trying to set up. Unfortunately, you don't have a ton of pressure outside of these two minute windows. Um, but you, like I said, with your axe toss fear macros, you can be setting up consistent CC on the off target every 30 seconds, letting your fear come off of diminishing returns, letting the stun come off of diminishing returns, and just basically being patient and setting that up to get that extra pressure. Now, like I had mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video, your good comps to run. Resto Shaman is really effective. If you're running threes, you can run with a Resto or Elemental Shaman. Holy Pally is also very good. Um, those are the two healers I would say are the best. If you have a priest friend, priest can also do well. I'm not a huge fan of Miss Weaver and resto druid with this setup um but if you have friends to play them any healer is viable you can make it work it'll just be harder once you start getting into higher ratings because your cc combinations are not going to be as effective as other combos but i would say our best pairing right now it feels like is shaman shaman with the hex off of your fear chain is very very strong shaman's being able to kick and having all the totems and sky fury totem all these kinds of things you have all these things that you can do to kind of help buff your damage and just synergizes so well um, so, you know, give that, give that a try. Go ahead and watch these clips, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, and thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.
Sunrise is just for you 